I have been doing some experiments based on an LED replacement for the classic neon test screwdriver, the electrical test equipment of choice for do-it-yourselfers, handymen and builder contractors who don't really want to spend much on electrical test gear but want a basic indication of whether they're going to die when they touch a live wire. So this thing is very simple. It contains a neon indicator and a one Meg ohm resistor, and I'll show you the inside of this because it is this one is a British compliant one, it is designed to be safe. You do get more active electronic ones. I looked at one of these recently. This is a computerized one, it's ridiculous. But this one uh, does the continuity test as well. That's a bit of a downside because even if you touch it to what, what's not a live wire, it can sometimes light up and give a misleading uh, indication that you're working with live electricity. Uh, but on the other hand, you can use this when you can just hold it near electrical connections and it will uh, glow to indicate uh, that there are live electrical connections in the vicinity, which is quite useful. It means you don't have to cut into wires. However, this video is strictly about the Neon one and my new reinvented LED replacement with no batteries. So let me show you the schematic of this first, of what I've been thinking. So I shall zoom in this. I shall zoom down and focus down onto this and I'll show you the schematic and then we'll do the test and I'll stuff it into live electrical connection and stick my finger over the end of it. So the classic neon screwdriver, that's this one, has the neon indicator lamp and the one meg ohm resistor. The cheapy Chinese ones use a really inadequate one meg ohm resistor. Uh, the proper ones like this one, well I'll show you the inside, uh, have a proper really high separation resistor for safety reasons. My approach is, again, to use, well, this is the ideal circuit. It's a string of green LEDs in inverse polarity. And the idea of having inverse polarity is that uh, one, when it's lit, will protect whichever polarity it is. One of these will light, but the other one, when it's lit, will shunt the voltage down to a level it won't exceed the peak inverse voltage of the other LED. And it means that, technically speaking, you have a little circuit board with a row of resistors along it, and then LEDs on either side just match, match pair, or alternate pairs. So you've got, say, three dots of light down one side and three dots down the other. However, the way I've implemented it at the moment is purely, for simplicity, using LED tape. A strip of LED tape stuck to another bit of LED tape in the, with the polarity reversed from one side to the other so that uh, I've got an arrangement like this. And a classic, a higher power, one meg ohm resistor, just because the higher power ones tend to have a higher voltage rating. But I'd still prefer to have the resistors along like that. So let me show you what's inside the neon, the classic neon one. So inside the classic neon uh, version, this is glued on. It's not just pressed or screwed in it. It's physically glued. It actually broke when I was taking it apart. But inside is a little plastic tube with a neon indicator in it. The neon indicator has two wires coming out the bottom, but one has been taken up to the other end and twisted round the pip. And the other end is poked down through that, cropped, and then folded over so that when you put it into the screwdriver, it touches against the uh, end of the tip here just against that wire that's bent round the side. There is the super duper highly rated one meg ohm resistor stuffed into a spring, which doesn't really inspire much confidence, does it? And you can see the carbon film on it and this sort of like the sort of laser cut or whatever around it. And that provides a separation and also limits the maximum current. And it, the other end of the spring literally goes into that little plastic cup and it touches because this wire is wrapped round here. Um, Wherever the spring is, it'll basically touch that wire um, and push down against it, and that makes the electrical connection. Here is my variation. It's different. It is the double-sided uh, piece of LED tape with three green LEDs. Ignore these resistors, they're just the one that was in there because it's 12-volt tape. I have to say that I uh, chose green because green is the most efficient colour. It's the, it's the highest brightness for just a few microamps. It's the most sensitive of all the colours. Having said that, even a good efficiency red LED will light. Um, and there's the one meg ohm resistor. I've got it in heat shrink sleeving for electrical separation. And this resistor basically popping out then folding around so it touches the end electrode. And then this spring just stuffed in the end, making the connection up to the stud at the other end because that was one of these screwdrivers. But I stripped the bits out and just put my own circuitry in.
Right, OK. Now I'm going to set up the test and you can tell me which you think is best. So one moment, please. Begin the test with our favourite little Chinese tester. So for this test, I'm going to stuff the uh, Neon driver into this live connection. And I'm going to stick this other one into this live connection over here. So I'll turn that on and I shall uh, turn the light off so you can see this because I doubt you can actually see anything. I'm just out of interest. Can you see the uh, can you see the LEDs glowing in that? Not really super brightly. Oh, you can see them glowing. OK, that's all right. You can also see them flickering the camera. Now, to make this more interesting, to get extra brightness, this is a soldier iron. It's off the soldier iron, but I'm going to use it as a grounded surface. Well, that's dangerous for a... Uh, just to represent a someone in a different environment, just to show you the difference in intensity between standing on an insulated ladder with a neon driver and being in a more grounded environment. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the light off and I'm going to take the exposure off and this should give a better result. Oh, look at the nice bright display now. So here is the neon driver and if I touch it, you can see it's not that bright. See the little dot inside? But watch the difference between me touching that and holding a grounded object touching it. See how much brighter it is? Significantly brighter. Right, here is my little improvised LED test, which I'll stuff in here. And when I touch the end of that, look how bright that is as standard. But again, if I touch something grounded, it's really bright, very visibly bright. But you can't rely on being grounded well all the time. So for reference, here is... Well, I can't actually show you. I can only show you one lit at a time with a ambient ground because uh, the LEDs clamp the voltage to the point I can't that the neon won't light. But if I touch the ground again and light, you can see which is brighter now. The green is massively brighter than the neon. Um, so that makes me wonder, you know, is there a future for these little test drivers just with a little circuit board with neons in it? Uh, not neons, LEDs in it. I should stuff that in there while avoiding going anywhere near near this grounded soda iron here. But there we go. Uh, interesting. Right, watch your eyes. The light is coming back. So there we have it. With the efficiency of modern LEDs, with the sensitivity of them, could these be the new future? Uh, neon driver? Because it's kind of easy to make in a circuit board. Um, it depends the availability of neons. I don't see neons being discontinued for a long time and the manufacturers are already set up for mass production of these. But it does show you that there is potential for using LEDs directly for measuring the current because it literally only takes microamps to make the green LEDs glow. And you do have the option, you could use white LEDs, but they wouldn't be as sensitive. But uh, having said that, they're probably still probably going to glow brighter than uh, the neon glows. And also you could use a little uh, cob array with a large matrix of the LEDs in series inside, even the alternating uh, polarity inside the cob array just to make a little dedicated uh, test indicator that just needs the external resistor. But that is it. I would say that experiment was a success. I wonder if they'll ever manufacture them. It would be interesting to see if they did. Very interesting indeed.